Breaking news for Julian Assange gets 50 weeks, 50 weeks for bail jumping in England. Wow, how about that? Let's jump right into it. So here's Julian Assange. He appeared in court out of prison. This is a uh, shot today. His beard's a little trimmed. He's looking good. Gave the, gave the fist pump to the crowd. Oh, I'm still here. I'm alive. I'm fighting. So he got slammed 50 weeks for bail jumping. The judge gave him the maximum sentence. Uh, it's the least of his problems. Let's, let's read. The U.S. will also look at what the attorneys uh, said on the steps. WikiLeaks co-founder has been sentenced to 50 weeks in jail for breaching his bail con- conditions. The 47-year-old was found guilty of breaching bail um, last month after his arrest at the Ecuadorian embassy. He took refuge in the London embassy in 2012 to avoid extradition to Sweden over sexual assault allegations. Right? The prosecution, this is the prosecution of a journalist. Right? This, that's what this is. Forget about sexual harassment. Get him on anything. That's, that's the strategy. Get him on anything. Just get him. He revealed U.S. secrets. You got to get him. In a letter to the court, uh, he struggled with difficulties. I'll read the letter, but let's look at what the judge said. Sentencing him, Judge Deborah Taylor told Assange it was difficult to envisage, 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 envisage a more serious uh, example of the offense. Quote, by hiding in the embassy, you deliberately put yourself out of reach while remaining in, in the UK, she said. She said this had, quote, undoubtedly affected the progress of the Swedish proceedings. He continu- his continued residency at the, re- as the, the embassy and bringing him to justice cost the taxpayers 16 million pounds. Wow, that's a lot. Uh, whilst you have had fears as to what may have happened to you, nonetheless, you had a choice, and the choice of action you chose was to commit this offense. She concluded. All right. So uh, it's also a question of life and death for a major journalist principal, said uh, he told uh, he told reporters. That's um, WikiLeaks editor in, editor in chief. All right, we'll hear from him in a second. We have live video. So this is um, uh, let's read Assange's letter. This is what he said. I apologize unreservingly to those who consider that I have disrespected them by the way I have pursued my case. This is not what I wanted or intended. I found myself struggling with test with terrifying circumstances for which I neither uh, or nor those from whom I sought advice could work out any remedy. I did what I thought at the time was the best and perhaps the only thing that could be done which I hoped might lead to a legal resolution being reached between Ecuador Ecuador and Sweden that would protect me from the worst of my fears. I regret the course that this took. The difficulties were indeed compounded and impacted upon, uh, upon very many others. Whilst the difficulties I now face may have become even greater, nonetheless, it is right for me to, to say this now it's kind of kind of short on words so let's hear the, the attorneys this is um wikileaks um christian hoffnessner uh wikileaks editor and his, and his lawyer to get a sentence only two weeks short of the maximum sentence is an outrage it's almost double the sentence again. to get a sentence only two weeks short of the maximum sentence is an outrage. It's almost double the sentencing guideline. And may I point out, just in comparison, that the so-called speedboat killer got six months for not showing up in court to hear his sentencing for manslaughter. But the fight continues. Tomorrow is the big fight, the start of the big and most important fight to fight against the extradition of Julian Assange to the United States. What is at stake there? Could it be a question of life and death for Mr. Assange? It is also 
a question of life and death for a major journalistic principle. Today is the first time that a British court has heard detailed evidence about the concerns and the fears that led Mr Assange to seek asylum inside the Ecuadorian embassy. I encourage all of you to take the time to read those submissions that will be made public and to come to your own conclusion about that evidence and the reasonableness of his decision to go inside the embassy when he chose to do so. This case is and has always been about the risk of extradition to the United States. We've been saying since 2010 that that risk is real and we now have a provisional extradition request from the United States. The focus of our energies will now be on fighting that extradition request and that fight starts tomorrow. Thank you. We will not take uh, questions, but we are willing. So, so it's pretty heavy, right? So Julian Assange is facing extradition to the United States. This is the, the, the foundation of Russiagate lies here. Right? For anybody who hasn't been paying attention, it's almost impossible, right? But if you read the, um, the Mueller report from pages 36 to 48, you see that the whole foundational principle of Russiagate is that there, the United States says Russia hacked the election, hacked the DNC servers, and handed the information to WikiLeaks. Now, that is not the issue of extradition. I know, that's not the point, but that is the point, right? That Julian Assange leaked information and has has leaked not just the DNC leaks, but the the situation with Chelsea Manning, where he where uh, where Chelsea Manning was a military operative handed w- uh, WikiLeaks information about American war crimes in Afghanistan and uh, Iraq. I that's what that's the illusion that somehow Julian Assange helped Chelsea Manning hack uh, hack government servers. It's just it's just totally false. There's no evidence to suggest it. And they're holding uh, Chelsea Manning uh, for contempt of court for not testifying in front of a grand jury. He's he or she is being held in uh, Virginia. But nonetheless, the the foundational player. He's not the source, the publisher of the the information that that I don't know changed the path of the United States, right? Gave us Donald Trump as opposed to Hillary Clinton, and certainly as opposed to Bernie Sanders, right? Reveal those secrets to the world is uh, is being prosecuted for journalism, right? It's the bait and switch. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not for that. It's for this over here. No, no, no. Out of nowhere, seven years later, ten years later. They pull this, uh, this, um, oh, you helped Chelsea Manning, uh, you helped Chelsea Manning hack, hack the military server. You try to deep, you know, crack a password, right? It's right up there with, uh, you know, it's right up there with 12 Russians hack the DNC. It's all fiction, right? But nonetheless, we're here and, um, Julian Assange has gotten 50 weeks to max. I don't know if there's good time in England. Maybe he'll... Maybe he'll get, you know, maybe he'll get out in a, you know, maybe a, a, he'll do two-thirds of that time. And he's got to fight extradition, right? The, 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 the lawyers have to prove that, that um, the crime that he's being extradited for is not an offense in England. That's the way it, it stands, right? And it's almost a guarantee. Once Assange is here, they're going to up the ante. They're going to they're gonna jack the charges up to espionage and try to try to keep him in a cell for the rest of his life. So it's crazy, man. Crazy times we're living in. Where's Trump? Where's 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 Sanders? Where's the Democrats? Where's the where's the outrage? Where's the media outrage in our country that a publisher is being prosecuted for unrelated unrelated stuff? It's, it's crazy. Marcus Conti reporting.